Hey there, Charger fam. This is Mrs. Boyd. Today, we are talking about inequalities in two triangles. We're going to take a lot of the stuff that we learned about inequalities in one triangle and kind of put that off onto two triangles. You won't be shocked by anything that I say today. Um, so the hinge theorem, if segment CA is congruent to segment FD, let's put that on our triangles. CA and FD are congruent. Uh, segment CB is congruent to segment FE. CB and FE are the same. And the measure of angle C is greater than the measure of angle F. So these sides are the same congruent on two triangles and one angle measures more than the other. Then we can say with this hinge theorem that segment AB will be greater than segment DE or in the same breath, segment DE will be less than segment AB. So if angle C is bigger than angle F, AB will be bigger than DE. Let's try that out. We've got in triangle KJM, um, we've got JK is 15 and JM is 15. So those sides are the same. We've got JL that is also congruent. So we've got two congruent sides on two triangles. The incorporated angle, we've got angle KJL is 40 and MJL is 25. That means since 40 is greater than 25, that segment KL will be greater than segment LM or segment LM will be less than segment LK. Same idea. Let's do one more. We've got AB is congruent to DF, CB is congruent to FE, and then we've got DFE is 32 and angle B is 57. Well, since 57 is greater than 32, we can say that segment AC will be greater than segment DE or segment ED will be less than segment CA. That's a less than. All right, so this is a whole lot like um, one triangle, we're just using a few more ideas. Uh, the converse of the hinge theorem. If segment CA is congruent to segment FD, so CA and FD are congruent, and uh, segment CB is congruent to segment FE, and line AB is greater than segment DE, then we can say the measure of angle C will be greater than the measure of angle, oh, that's wrong, measure of angle F. Or the measure of angle F will be less than the measure of angle C. Let's also put this into practice. We've got AC and DF are congruent both at 15. We've got CB and EF congruent both at 25. Well, AB is 35, DE is 30. So we can use that to say the measure of angle, sorry, the dog tipped my arm. Measure of angle C, Bradley, stop, is greater than the measure of angle F or the measure of angle F is less than the measure of angle C. Uh, let's do one more of those, and then we'll move on. Uh, we've got um, K M K M L and K L that are congruent, and I've got J L that uses the reflexive property to be congruent to itself. Well, J K is twenty one point seven, and J M is twenty two point five. That means the measure of angle J L M will be greater than Let's make that look a little better. Greater than the measure of angle JLK. We can also say, or the measure of angle J, 
I have got this all. That's supposed to be, oh, and that's not an eraser. Holy moly. Let's fix that. There we go. That's supposed to be an L, J, L, K. So then the measure of angle J, L, K will be less than, oh, I've got this all wrong. Holy moly. This should be greater. All right, let's fix this here. This is wrong. That should be greater. Now we're less than the measure of angle J, L, M. Sorry about that. I don't know what came over my brains. Um, flip it on over to the other side. And let's see what we can figure out about the range. Okay, so let's check out these triangles here. We've got um, the triangle on the left and right, those have congruent sides. They share a side, so using a really reflexive property, we know that that side is also congruent to itself. Um, and then we've got these two angles. One is 80 degrees, one is 70 degrees. Well, the one that's 80 degrees is bigger than the one that's 70 degrees. So we know that this side, x plus five, has to be greater than the other side, which is 18. We solve this little inequality and we get x is greater than 13. So we don't know what x is, we just know it's bigger than 13. Let's do another one. We've got two sides that are congruent and a second side that's congruent to itself. We have 65 and 60 as the angles that are included in those sides. So 65 is bigger than 60. So that side that corresponds, 5x minus 8, has to be greater than 30. And we solve for x. Add 8 to each side. 5x is greater than 38. Divide by 5. And x is greater than 38 fifths. I'm not going to simplify anymore. That's as good as it gets. Here's one more. We've got side one that's congruent, side two that's congruent, and these included angles. Well, 70 of 70 and 65, 70 is greater. So we know that x plus 4 is going to be greater than 15. We subtract four from each side, and we get x is greater than 11. Let's do some more of this kind of problem. We have uh, one side here that's congruent to, it, to each other, one that's congruent to itself. Now we have side lengths. So, we have four and six plus three. Six plus three is bigger. So we know 60 is gonna be greater than X plus five. We solve for X and we get 55 is greater than X. Um, other thing we know, the X is an angle. So it has to be, that angle has to be greater than zero. So we solve for X we get x is greater than negative 5. We put this all in one big compound inequality. Smallest number on the left, x in the middle, biggest number on the right, and all the signs face the same way. So that's the range for x when it involves an angle. Let's do another one that looks just like that. We've got a side and a side that are congruent, another two sides that are congruent, and our two angles, one is 70, and that's the greater side that goes with that. So 17 is greater than the side that goes with 65, 3x plus 2. So we subtract 2 from both sides, and that's 15 is greater than 3x. Divide by 3, and 5 is greater than x. Um, we also know that 3x plus 2 has to be greater than 0. So we subtract 2 and get 3x is greater than negative 2. 
And let me scoot my page up a bit here. Um, and divide by three. So X is greater than negative two thirds. So compound inequality, small number, X, bigger number, all signs pointing the same way. Last one, we have sides that are congruent, another side congruent to itself. 9.1 and 8.5 are our side lengths. 9.1 is bigger, so that is 70, is greater than 2x minus 5. We solve 4x. 75 is greater than 2x. Divide, and I get 75 over 2 is greater than x. We also know that 2x minus 5 has to be greater than 0. So we solve for x. Divide by 2. x is greater than 5 over 2. So compound inequality. Little number, x. Big number, all less thans. I hope this makes all sorts of sense. I hope you're doing amazing. And I hope to see you soon.